The remarkable works of Canadian inventor John Hutchison has drawn widespread attention from businessmen and government scientists since 1979 when he began using ultra-high electromagnetic frequencies to transform matter in some very unusual ways. It has come to be known as the Hutchison effect. The objects you are seeing um, moving there is a form of levitation by uh, translational movement, meaning that the objects become lighter and can float around, the heaviest being the barium cylinder that you see there um, with the two wires coming out of it. it tends to slide around on seven pounds of its own weight. The physics of it is self-resonation of what they call a ferromagnetic and piezoelectric barium type name uh, through a power amplifier and broad and narrow uh, bands of electrical energy going into this crystal. So the applications of this in advanced applications using free energy or zero-point energy to power it would be in uh, propulsion technologies. Uh, metallurgical samples falling apart, uh, changing into transmuted unknown metals. Uh, quite a variety of obscure types of effects, wood impregnated into uh, metals, other objects in metals, uh, monopole uh, magnetic fields written up in many journals. Um, quite a host or a Pandora's box of different types of effects on the outer edge of of the scientific uh, community. In this remarkable series of video clips shot by Hutchison, we see what happens when he fine-tunes the electromagnetic frequencies aimed at target objects in his garage. On a subatomic level, I feel that there is a, a dimension shift activated by very conventional electrostatic RF fields that I use and Tesla waves that I use that actually form a keyway that opens up another area of time and space that may activate the zero point energy fields and interdimensional reactions, let's say, to gravitational waves and time waves, or chronons, if you wish. Perhaps we're dealing in chronons and gravitons, which are maybe particles, and somehow causing a distortion, which causes objects to simply break apart or pulsate in the center uh, of stainless steel bars and fall apart, or to become weightless. ice cream in a plastic cup. Finally, a 70 pound cannonball.
what is uh, interesting and also frustrating about his invention is that he's using a combination of Tesla coil and Van de Graaff to produce a very disruptive and lifting experiments, which in one case, for example, uh, actually lifts a 19-pound bushing uh, toward the ceiling just from electromagnetic fields. Now, when we analyze that, we find that there's a position versus time graph that we can plot and also the velocity versus time. But when we actually analyze the um, acceleration versus time, it's uh, an increasing straight line. So we're forced as scientists to admit that we have a third derivative effect, which um, for my mind actually lends itself to a, a anomalous new force, which I call hyperforce, uh, because we have to take a derivative of that to finally get a flat straight line, a constantly increasing acceleration. So the Hutchinson effect has been used as a benchmark for a comparison to many other high voltage propulsion devices, electrogravity in other words.